What's up, everybody? This is Connor and Joshua with Chamber One Tactical. Today we're going to switch it up a little bit and have a uh, optic review instead of a gun review. We're going to be reviewing some optics that we've got uh, and kind of going through the goods and the bads of them and why you shouldn't let your friends buy something like this. Let's get into it. So the first optic we're going to talk about is the Holosun 407A3, um, which is on our budget gun. It's on our, <laughs> it's on our Palmo, uh, Palmetto State Dagger Compact. Um, so this is an aluminum bodied uh, optic. It is running, I believe this one is a 3MOA dot. Uh, it's a red, <coughs> red dot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we ended up picking this thing up for what, 179 Palmetto State off. Uh, Palmetto State Army had a deal on it that I believe it was one seventy nine. Mm, that um, is pretty good. I looked the other day; they're one ninety nine right now. So I believe I picked it up when it was around Christmas time. So that may be why I got a little cheaper. But uh, I've been pretty impressed with that optic. It's it's hollow sun uh, quality. It's it's not anything cheaper. I think the one thing they they kind of took out of there so that you could get a little bit cheaper price was mm -hmm. the solar panel on top. Yeah. So, you so I guess we can really move on to the. It's basically brother. Yeah. You could say just a little bit cheaper option. Right. And yeah. I'll let you hold that one, which is the four hundred seven C. Yeah. So really, the main difference is like Connor was saying, it just doesn't have that that uh, solar panel up top. Yep. So whereas this one is a little bit cheaper, you're getting about forty thousand hours of runtime for the dot, and they're both shake away. Yep. That one is going to have about fifty thousand, just because it's got that. You know, solar panel up top. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been pretty impressed with both of these. They're like he said, they're very similar. Yeah. Um, the glass clarity is very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I never have any issues. You know, it bothering me trying to pick up a sight picture or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and they don't get that real bad star, uh, you know, effect when you start bumping them up as far as the intensity goes on the on the light. So, um, very impressed with the optics, especially for what you're paying. I know there's a lot of cheap stuff out there. Yeah. Um, this is pretty much. You know, and we're we're in the middle of testing a a little bit cheaper option. If you want to go ahead and mention that, yeah, I won't mention the brand name yet, but we are testing some that are closer to a uh, hundred dollars or less. Yep. Uh, we've also we have had experience with some that are cheap, uh, such as the one that Connor just threw. <laughs> um, that one was probably under what was it under a hundred dollars? Oh, it was yeah, but it was a piece of junk. Wouldn't work when you tighten. Yeah, I'll let you explain what happened to it. And I want to say too, we didn't buy that off. We, of course. We buy quality stuff. Well, um, our dad bought Budget that. quality. Our, our dad bought that. <laughs> and we told him not to. It was Amazon special, and we're like, don't buy that, and he bought it anyways. But the problem we had with that one is um, when you would go to actually tighten the screws down, and it's not that we were over-tightening, so before y'all say that, it's not that. But we'd start tightening down the screw, and just when it was starting to get snug, the optic would turn off. Um, we, tried to, we tried a bunch of different things, tried to see if we were doing something wrong, but every single time when you would tighten that that screw down just a just one little turn past it getting snug, it would turn turn the light off. So little uh not that we were surprised. It's not that we're surprised about it because yeah. I knew it was gonna be junk, but uh it is that's kind of the one thing where I, what I was gonna say is stay away from the super cheap stuff. Yeah. It you know, if you can go on there, even on Amazon, it or at kinda, least do your research before you buy it. Yeah, you gotta watch Amazon. Um, Amazon buying on optics, you really never know who you're listening to. Who, who I mean, some of these guys may be buying them and putting them on airsoft guns. And they're like, Oh, these things are great, they work so good, but the whole time they're using them on airsoft guns, you go put them on a real gun yeah. and it breaks. So just watch, be paying attention when you're buying uh, optics. Don't just listen to anybody who's trying to say that it's good. Uh, you yep. just never really know who to trust on on some stuff. But um, the where we kind of start in price on cheap optics is Holosun. That's yep. that's about as cheap, and, and that's kind of why we wanted to venture out and get some cheaper stuff. But this is kind of the cheapest thing we've got right now. That you that, would actually that we trust. I would say would qualify it that you could actually put it on a carry pistol, right? Not just as something to plink with or Absolutely. shoot at, shoot at targets like. You can actually depend on it with your life. Yeah. Yeah. So impressed with both of these. Mm -hmm. Again, this one's coming in right there. Two hundred. Let's just say $200. Yeah. 
and then this one's coming in at 250. Uh, and I believe both of them have that one's a three MOA and this one's a two MOA. So that's the only real differences between the two. Uh, and then moving up in price, we have the again another Holosun. You guys can tell we like Holosun. Um, is the 508T. So this one is a titanium frame or body, um, and it has a solar panel on top. Again, this is going to have the 50,000 hour runtime. Yep. This has a two MOA dot, and then you also have the option of doing the 32 MOA circle around the dot, or just the thir uh, 32 MOA circle, uh, or just the two MOA dot. That's fancy. So you get a little <laughs> bit, of, a lot of options. And a quick mention: the uh, 507C mm -hmm. is the same thing as this one right here. You just have these options as well. Yep. So it's very similar body, very similar. It's all all the same stuff. You just get different options as far as your reticle. Yep. Uh, and that one's going for 309, I think is what that, that optic, you know, sells for. So not a, not a huge jump in price if that's something that you're wanting, but I really like this optic. Um, I think it looks cool. <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of it, a lot of what people buy, uh, when they're looking for optics is how good it looks on a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I think not, that's just you, buddy. Not really. Yeah. But, uh, I do like the look of this optic. I've always been a fan of the look of the Trigicon RMR. I think it looks good on guns. Um, so I liked the look of this optic. Where it's squared off and not as round. Yeah, yeah, it just it looks a little sharper. I like sharp edges. So. Well, and I, I would say, yeah, it looks good on the gun, but it also looks good when you're looking through it because right. that one actually has a little bit bigger of a window. Yep. When you present it, you just have a little bit fuller of a picture. Yeah, I really, I've, I've really enjoyed this, especially on this echelon. Um, you know, it, we've had it on a couple different guns, and it's just like you said, it's an easy optic mm -hmm. to, to shoot with. And this one is coming in, I believe, what was this one, 370? Yeah. 370, you know, you're that's around the price you're going to find this one for if, if that's something you're looking for. Um, but, again, same quality as far as clarity in the glass, not having that star effect and anything. And then the last one we've got is the Trigicon RMR Type 2, mm -hmm. uh, which this one is coming in at the highest price uh, of, you know, 499 around the $500 range. Uh, so – it's not that I was disappointed in this optic. I, I really like it. And I know a lot of people purchase these for the durability. Yeah. Now, that's one thing to say that we have not durability tested to you know crazy extent. We, right. We've used them in everyday use. We may have dropped it or bump, bumped it up against something, hit it on, on a table or something like that. But we don't sit there and use them as hammers and stuff. Like yeah. when other people get sent optics and they just get to destroy them and it doesn't really hurt their pockets. Um, yeah. we, we haven't done that because that's, we're not really ever going to need to do that, hopefully. Um, but that's just something that we haven't tested is how durable they are. Right. And, you know, they do have a better record of being more durable than say the hollow suns. Yeah. So I would say like, if it's going to be a carry pistol or something like that, durability is a huge, right? right. Like it's going to be pretty protected. Now, if you're saying that you would want to put this on more of like a duty style where it's exposed all the time, you might be crawling around doing crazy stuff. Yeah, you might be able to justify it. But I would say as far as the performance of when you're actually just shooting the gun and linking with it, you're not really you're not really gaining anything with the RMR over the hollow side. For that much money. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, really the only thing that this has is just a better track record for durability over the hollow side. Yeah, I didn't notice any more clarity. Yeah. And, and maybe some people do, but I didn't really notice anything that much more special about this optic than these. And we shot them all together mm -hmm. um, right back to back and never really seemed to be a big difference between, you know, the four of them. So for it to be coming in at that five hundred dollar price range, it's kind of a little ex a little expensive for what it is. Now, again, we did talk about they have these ears up on the top, which is helping if it were to hit the ground, keeping your glass from shattering. Because I have seen people do tests where, you know, it, it hits on the top and it, it breaks the glass. Um, so, again, we don't test stuff like that. We're just we're just shooting them, uh, shooting with them, not yes. shooting them. <laughs> yeah. But I do like the Type 2 because it does have the um, buttons on either side of the optic. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Um, the Hollow Suns all have their buttons on one side. I think the, yeah, they're all... the subcompact optics, they make one that, that has the bigger button on just mm -hmm. one side. But... The main thing that we really figured out about the, the RMRs that we didn't exactly love, especially putting it on this gun specifically, is there's no battery tray 
like the Holosuns. So yep. this one, the battery sits on, on the underside of the optic and the optic just sits on top of the gun. And trying to get this goofy optic onto the gun because you have that little spacer back there was kind of a pain to try and keep the battery inside the optic. So not a super huge fan of that. Uh, I think especially with being able to buy cheaper uh, optics and or lower priced optics mm -hmm. and they have a battery tray on the side where you never have to take the optic off of the gun to change the battery out i would much prefer this system than the trigicon yeah like this for one, that specifically this is the cheapest hollow sun that we have here right or the cheapest optic that we have right. here and it has that tray right there so you can slide it out and you don't have to go and re-zero your red dot every single time you take it off and it is like you said especially on that gun it was very tight right very tight tolerance um, it's just kind of funny though, because these all have a longer battery life. So we got 40,000, 50,000 on these. And then we, we did some research. They say anywhere from 17 all the way up to about 35,000 hours of runtime on these. And, uh, so you're going to be changing that more often and it's not as convenient. Yep. Whereas these, you're not having to change as often and it's more convenient to do so. Yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this, this, um, radical is a three and a quarter MOA. Mm -hmm. So you've got three MOA, uh, I believe this, so three MOA, two MOA, two MOA, and three and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not a huge difference. Um, the two is very, very small. Yeah. And so I will say that it's kind of small, especially if you're using it for uh, self-defense, picking up that, that dot may be a little bit harder for you, but when it comes to further shooting yep. and precision, I really like it. Which is nice um, when you have that circle to go around it. You have yeah. the best of both worlds right there. Yeah. So, I mean, we've tested a few other optics. Like, we've got a Swamp Fox back here. Um, we've got a cheaper True Glow up here. We've, we've tested some, some, some cheaper yeah. uh, optics. And this is really what it's come to as far as what we prefer to run on carry guns and duty guns at this point. Um, these are the optics that we trust the most. Uh, and we do have, I uh, believe... I think both of us do. We we have the um, 407 Ks. Yeah, the smaller on our ones, carry yeah. guns, um, on on some of our carry guns, and we fell in love with those things. They're just great little optics that again have the battery on a tray <laughs> that you can and they're tiny. Not have to take your goofy your optic off every time you want to change your battery. Yeah. So and I know people. Everybody always makes it. They make excuses for oh, well, why would you complain about rezeroing your gun or getting more familiar with your gun to. That's all crazy. Yeah, you know, I would much rather just be able to take out that little screw right there, yeah. take the tray out and replace my battery and not have to take the goofy side off every time. So, yeah. but if it was up to you mm -hmm. out of the four that we've got, which one would you go with for, I'm going to ask which one would you go for with for a duty gun and which one would you go with for a carry gun? Okay. So I'm, I'm a little custom. different than most. Yeah. So I, oh, we, we know, we know you're a little different. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and at least I can acknowledge that. <laughs> um, I, I'm self-aware. But, okay, so you, those are two different questions. If it's more of like a compact size, I would go with probably the uh, the 407C. So I do like having the little solar panel. So I think it's about a, what, $50 difference? Yeah. Might as well go ahead and get it, yeah. you know. So it's not a big deal for me. So I would go ahead and get it. And the, it looks fancy. Yeah, I like solar. I like solar panels. It looks panels, cool so. on the top. Um, you know, just compared to the, I, I think this might be a Palmetto State exclusive red dot. I believe so it is. I would just go ahead and go with that one. I would be very tempted to go with this one if I was running a duty gun because it is a little bit wider. It's not as rounded off. So if it's on your side, it's not that big a deal. But when you actually point it out, you got a bigger window. Yeah. And I like having a bigger window. So, um. Yeah, I think that would be my choice. If it's more compact, I would go with the 407. If I was uh, had it more exposed, like on a duty belt, I would go with, what is this, the 508T? Mm -hmm. yep. And we, what about you? We're kind of leaving the subcompact category out right now because we have not tested the Well, these are all on the same platform. Right. Yeah, yeah. we haven't tested the Trigicon's version of the, the subcompact model, so we would want to do that before we tell you, you know, which one we would choose. But yep. uh, if it was me, you know, mm -hmm. I kind of agree with everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. I know that these are, are durability tested. They're very, very durable. Um, but for the money, you know, it's such a big difference between the two. This mm -hmm. is titanium, so it's a higher quality metal that should be stronger, I would assume. I mean, titanium is stronger than aluminum. So right. it's a higher quality uh, metal. It lasts longer. Um, 
and I believe these optics will run pretty much on any ambient light as long as there's a battery in there. Yeah. So this one runs out of battery if everything goes south and I can't get a battery for this thing, these will still run if I've got ambient light, which is what's making the difference for me. I yeah. would I would probably go with 508T on a you know duty gun. And then like you said, I, I would agree, I'm still gonna go on a compact gun with, with the 407C yeah. Just because, again, it's it's cheaper. You've got a longer runtime, the battery trays. And, you know, I actually prefer the way that these, it's more of the body of the actual optic. Mm -hmm. Something with these ears, it kind of messes with my with my eyes when I go to present the gun. I always, it's, it's just, it's strange. Uh, these are a little bit cleaner view when you're trying to present the gun and look at your target. So, and I will mention real quick, sighting these in, um, all the all the different ways that you sight them in, all of them have been very easy to use, mm -hmm. no issues there, and they're tactile little little clicks. So I like the way that they you, you adjust them. I just have one thing to add. As far as the durability of pistol optics, you always want to have that backup iron sights anyways. So you know the saying, it is plan for the worst, hope for the best. Yep. So I mean, yeah, you want to plan for the worst. You always want to make sure that you have proper sights, backup iron sights that you can always go back to if your optic fails. So plan for the worst, but hope for the best and hope that that optic is always going to run. So yep. it's not a huge deal if your optic goes out because you have those backup irons yep. and you, you know should mean, train the, with both. The only time you're only going to have an optic is when you're doing specific, you know, um, race gun shooting or, you know, going and doing your actual um, competition. I will shooting. say there has been a time when I was shooting and my optic blew off it was a hollow sun and hit me in the forehead. So I, I learned a lesson. If you buy a used gun, don't trust that the person that owned it before you actually loctited the bolts. Or put the correct screws in in general. That one didn't even have the right screws in there. Yeah. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt. Yep. I laughed. I thought so I know that they're durable because it hit my forehead <laughs> very hard and it did not break. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I have some brain damage because of that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we... This is this is just our take on the the optics that we have available to us. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there's other optics out there that are cheaper, and there's also optics out there that are more expensive. But this is what we have. This is what we have to go based off of right now. Um, so, you know, I know everybody out there. There's always other things that that we can review and everything like that. But it takes a little bit of money. So yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes it takes a little longer for us to get a hold of those things. But that's what that's what we've got um, for the for the optics that we have. We really enjoyed doing the video for you guys. Um, if there's anything that you guys have questions on about any of these optics, optics, let us know down in the comment section. If there's any other gear uh, or firearms that you guys would like us see uh, do some reviews on or give you information about, just let us know and uh, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.